folks that have never used Aquanage, welcome. We're happy to have you here kind of exploring what we have to offer. If you are an existing user, we're happy that you're still here looking for more information. Um, you're going to notice this logo, if you haven't yet, has been a little bit different than what we've seen in the past from Aquanage. We used to be known as Aquanage Salon Professional. We have now kind of rebranded and we're now called ASP, which of course stands for Aquanage Salon Professional. So this is the new branding we're going uh, to be using moving forward globally. So that's a new introduction as of, well, early 2020. Okay. A little bit of history on us. We do create world beating pro uh, products and we are born right in Britain. We were launched in 1996. We were conceived, created and launched by Eric Bailey uh, as a premium hair care brand. Here, all the way to the left, you're gonna see our headquarters in Romsey in the UK, in the middle here in Vista, California, and then all the way to the right, you'll see our headquarters in Australia. So this just gives you a good idea of where we have a footprint. This is another great map, again, showing you that we are a world-class brand and we are worldwide. Our home office here in North America will be right in Vista, California. That's where Laura was uh, talking from this morning. We also have our worldwide headquarters in Romsey. We have research and development in Bologna. We also manufacture there. We also have headquarters in Hong Kong as well as Australia. Okay. This is probably one of my favorite images that we have when we talk about uh, ASP and what we are about and where we're from. This shows you guys a really good idea of the fact that we're in over 60 countries and that our footprint is quite wide. So a lot of times people will say, you know, I've never heard of Afanage. But the great part is, is that this gives you a good representation of the fact that we really do have uh, some roots in multiple countries around the world. I'll just remind you guys, sorry, if you are not muted right now, if you could please make sure that you're muted. If you're not talking, just go ahead and click that little microphone button. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, a really great thing that we do at ASP, which we've done really forever, but we're bringing more to the forefront now is the fact that we always will defend nature. We stand behind this shield called the DNA shield, which of course stands for defend nature always. What this means is that we do no animal testing. We are 90% naturally derived, which is again, a thing, a thing that we've been doing really since 1996, but we just didn't talk about it as much. So of course that has come to the forefront of people's minds. It's important to stylists, it's important to sales reps, it's important to distributors, and it's important to the guest in the chair that we are. So that's a really great benefit that we have. In addition to that, we do use all of our packaging from uh, renewable and resourceable resources, which are great. We use natural components, we're vegan friendly as well as gluten friendly. So that's just a little bit extra mile that we go in terms of making sure that we are certainly defending nature always. This mission statement, I feel like really rings true to my heart. When I first came on board with ASP just as a user um, and I read this mission statement, it honestly, it, it really means everything it says. And I think that for me, the longer I've been with this brand, the more passionate I feel about these things. So with ASP, we use knowledge, research, innovation, and technology to create to create superior, safe, leading edge products that inspire passion, creativity, and reassurance for the salon professional. I know myself, um, it certainly has sparked my creativity. I've worked out of the box a lot more than I ever have in the past, which is great. Um, I'm continuously passionate about this brand, about all the new stuff that we bring out. It never ceases to amaze me with what we can do. And it really does beyond anything Give me reassurance that behind the chair, the products that I'm bringing to my guests are top notch, are top quality, and they we really are bringing cutting edge technology at all times to them. So that's just a little bit about us as a brand if you're not familiar with us. And if you are familiar with us, I hope although those little facts just gave you a little bit more reason to love us. All right. So today we're going to talk about the Lightner lineup. What do you know what makes your lightener special? We kind of all think that lighteners are lighteners. There's nothing special and different about them. They all work the same. They just lighten hair. And to be honest, you can just kind of mix them however you want to, right? So honestly, it could be nothing more than the truth. We offer you guys seven unique lighteners within our portfolio. And today we're going to kind of delve into those, figure out what does make those lightener specials, when it's really great to use them, and how it's really great to use them. Okay. Do we have any questions so far, Nancy? We feeling good? No questions yet. Excellent. Perfect. 
Okay, so here you guys are going to see our decision tree. This is the lightning systems that we have within the ASP brand. You'll see here on the left, it says traditional bleach, where it says light. This is our high performance powder lightener. Then you'll see another arm that comes off that says technology, technologically advanced. This means that, of course, it's lightener that has a little bit of an edge to it in terms of technology. And then all the way over to the right, you guys will see lift and tone. And these are a really great, unique uh, systems that we have. Okay. Sorry, one second, guys. My, I'm, oh, there we go. Okay. I couldn't see anything. My whole presentation was blocked. Sorry. Okay. So moving on, this is the decision tree that we have. This is really great um, image for you guys. If you wanted to print it out, remember what kind of lightener falls in which category. It's really quite helpful. Okay. All right, so first we'll start with light. This is going to be more of your everyday lightener that you'll be using behind the chair. This is a dust-free powder lightener, which has up to seven levels of lift. It's a high performance powder lightener suitable for all techniques and applications. This is gonna come in two different colors. It's gonna come in blue and it's gonna come in white as well. There are no difference between the two, to be honest with you. As far as liftability, you're gonna be able to get the same kind of liftability out of them. The blue one is not going to lift and tone at the same time. Time. Really, the purpose of the blue lightener is just a lot of people have a preference with blue lightener. It's what they've always used, or the guest is asking for a blue lightener. Um, other than that, it's going to work just like the white lightener. Okay. I personally love the white. I love that as it lifts, I can see my, my remaining pigment right underneath it. There's no kind of guessing. There are some people that love the blue. It's just what they've always used. The blue really is there to mask the decolorizing process for your guests. Okay, so as someone has lightener on their root area and it's lifting, they're not seeing it go through all the different stages panicking. Okay, if again, if you guys haven't muted, could you please make sure you go through and mute? Thanks. Okay, this is going to be your extraordinary, ordinary lightener. This is what you're going to be using every day for your foils. Every day you can use this for balayage. I use this all the time for that purpose. Cap highlighting, you can put it into meshes. It's just going to be your, your most... Um, like I said, conventional yet extraordinary type lightener that we have, okay? It's gonna come in at 500 grams containers. I actually take these right out and I keep them in glass jars with a nice lid. I just feel like I like the way that it looks across my back bar much easier, uh, much nicer. And it just, again, I feel like it can, the top can seal all the way down. I don't have to worry about it knocking over the lid, not being on all the way, uh, but this is my go-to lightener, okay? Now we're going to talk about some features and benefits of what makes it so great. So again, this is going to give you up to seven levels of lift. Anytime you guys see this pink writing through a page like this is going to be what makes this lightener unique and different. Okay, so for light, we, what makes it unique and different is that we use hydrolyzed silk for cuticle protection and guar gum for scalp protection and comfort. So as this is actually on the scalp, if you're doing, for instance, a double process lightening, it really is going to feel really quite comfortable on the scalp. It's not going to have that, that typical really tight burning kind of feeling on the scalp. So those two ingredients really make this product quite unique. Um, I know myself, I used to use a lightener that I would hold my right up, my right hand up against. And I wouldn't, when I said, when I switch to ASP, I will not lose that lightener. And then my sales rep finally said, Heather, stuff is amazing. You've got to trust me. So she left me a container and I've used it and I've never looked back. It provides the most beautiful, even lift. It is just stunning. The hair feels in such better condition than any other lightener I've ever used before. Again, that hydrolyzed silk just really goes in and protects that cuticle layer so that you've got full strength all the way from the root, all the way down to the ends. Okay, when we talk about mixing ratio, this is something that's really unique and different when people talk about lighteners. People are very, very, very passionate about how they choose to mix their lighteners. Okay, they like to, a loose consistency, they like a more um, thick consistency. Everybody feels that they just need to mix to consistency. And to a certain extent, you guys can. But what's really, really great about our mixing ratios and what we actually suggest is if you turn that tub around, 
on any Lightner, you guys are going to find mixing instructions. And I can guarantee, because I was guilty of doing this myself, that most people have no idea what the mix ratio is on their Lightner. They just go ahead and mix to consistency. Okay. We have found that when you mix our Lightner, this one in particular light at a one to two parts, one part powder, two parts developer, you guys are actually going to get the most liftability in the shortest amount of time, which is really what we as stylists is that's what we're looking to do in terms of lightning. So you really will find that as you begin to actually measure out your Lightner, I just weigh it just like I do my color. You're really going to get a more predictable lift. Okay, I know I was that person always in the past that would do, you know, a partial foil and sometimes my guests would, you know, process really, really quickly and then other times she would kind of drag on and she just wouldn't get liftability. And I always blamed them right I was always like oh you must have something on your your hair today or you know whatever it might be I don't know why you're processing so slow and really once I turned inward and started realizing that I wasn't mixing my product appropriately that I wasn't able to get a really predictable result. So once I started doing that, number one, I, I wasted a lot of bleach before mixing. <laughs> so now I know, you know, on my, my certain guests say, Sarah, I mix 30 grams of lightener and 60 grams of developer, and I'm never throwing away lightener. Okay. We think of lightener as a really inexpensive product and we don't have an attachment to making sure that we're, you know, not overusing it, but I promise you guys beyond just for that, as far as the consistency of it, you're going to find that once you mix, you get a much better result. Okay, so again, mixing ratio is one to two for maximum liftability in the shortest amount of time. You're able to use 10 through 40 volume with light. We recommend that only 10 and 20 be used on scalp. Okay, never 30, 40 on the scalp. And that's pretty much an industry standard. Okay, this product will be active on the scalp for up to 60 minutes. Okay, after 60 minutes, you're not going to get much more liftability on that. It is suitable for all applications and techniques. So again, foils, uh, cap highlighting, uh, freehand work, hand painting, balayage, whatever it might be, you're free to do that. Okay, this product can go underneath heat for processing as well. Uh, we do not suggest that it goes on the scalp uh, uh, to be processed under heat on scalp. Okay. Excellent. So this is just a little idea of the performance that light can bring you. Uh, you can see on the left over here, this guest was really looking to embrace a bunch of her gray. So we went and we took all that color out of the hair by using light. I was able to use a 10 and 20 volume only. So I was able to keep my developer really low, left it on for a full 60 minutes, could get her to a nice, beautiful pale white. And then I went in and toned it after. But you can see from the picture on the right, what I was really trying to show you guys is just how strong that hair still looks, even going um, from a darker color, rich kind of base all the way up to pre-lightened and then toned. You can really see the hair still has a beautiful shine to it, a beautiful vibrancy. It looks healthy from root to end. It doesn't look angry at all. And that hydrolyzed collagen is really what, what sends it home on a product like that for a finish like that. Okay. How are we doing, Nancy? Any questions on light or comments on light? Yes, yes, yeah. we have great comments. Um, this is their go-to lightener. Um, one question, what did you tone with is what somebody's asked. Savannah so says. what I'll do is um, when we're done or if I have a break in a, in, in a few, what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll type that in. I want to say, to be honest, I'm gonna go back to it. I wanna say that it was 30 grams of 10.117, 20 grams of 10.2 and two grams of 0.2. That's, that's what I believe it to be, to be honest. I might have memorized it <laughs> at this point, but I can definitely go in and check at the end. And if I have to make an adjustment to that, I'll put it right in the chat. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more question. Uh, do you mix the light any differently if you're balayaging? Does it bleed into the hair with the balayage? Perfect. So the really great thing about light is that, again, you have that mix ratio of one to two. It's going to give you the max amount of lift in the shortest amount of time. There's a couple of things that you can do to kind of switch up the consistency. You can cut back to like a one to one and a half mix ratio. The only thing you have to keep in mind when you start playing with that mix ratio is that you're not going to get as much liftability anymore. So for instance, if I was going to go in and freehand, and typically I would use 10 volume if I was going to put a guest under foils, if I'm going to change my mix ratio to be more of like a one to one and a half, I'm probably going to use 20 volume to account for the fact that I'm not going to get that max liftability out of that 10 volume. Okay. I hope that makes sense. That gives you a, a much more uh, pasty type working consistency, but we also have some really great tools that we'll talk about at the very end that can help you with consistency with all of these lighteners, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, any others, Nance? No, uh, the comments, hair looks healthier. Yeah, it really, really does, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's what we like to see. Great. All right, so moving on, we have an ice, this is called ice cream. This is one of our ammonia-free powder lighteners. Uh, ice cream is an incredibly efficient ammonia-free lightener that allows for maximum liftability with ultra-low developers. And this is available in two variants. This is going to come in the fresh mint as well as the apple. This is a lightener that I'm going to be super candid with you guys about, okay? I think when this originally launched, it really scared people. Okay. And it, it shouldn't. We always said with this lightener, you know, you don't want to pull it through previously light and tear. And then to be honest with you, that scared everyone. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, we get ha ha people do highlights and they go back to dark. Then they, you know, we pull highlights back. I can't use a lightener like this because it's not going to allow me flexibility that I typically have with a traditional lightener. It's not true guys. Okay. The really great thing about ammonia, uh, this ammonia free lightener ice cream is that you just have to understand when and why to use it. You don't, it doesn't have to be something that you're afraid of, okay? So what's really great about ice cream, it's gonna give you up to seven levels of lift. This next star area right here with this, with this pink is what makes ice cream really unique, is that it's going to allow you to use gentle yet powerful formula is going to allow you to use really low developers to achieve maximum lift. So for instance, a 10 and a 20 volume is all we're going to use with ice cream. We're never going to use 30 and 40. And I know that most stylists like myself, as soon as you're given a rule, you're eager to run away and break it. But please, 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 let's understand why we say 10 and 20 volume only. Okay, 10 volume in ice cream is going to act like 30 volume with a traditional lightener. Okay, 20 volume in ice cream is going to act like a 40 volume with traditional lightener. So now you can see exactly why we wouldn't say that we recommend using 30 and 40 because 30 volume would be like 60 and 40 volume would essentially be rocket fuel, okay? So we really wanna make sure that the end goal of using all of our lightener is that cuticle is left in optimum condition. So this is a really great tool to use when you have someone who has really dark hair and you, you typically would reach for a 30 or a 40 in order to get a lot of liftability. With ice cream, you can go in and use a 10 volume and get results like a 30 or 20 volume and get results like a 40, which is really great and unique. Okay, this is act active up to 60 minutes. This is suitable for all applications and techniques similar to the light was. You can use it for balayage, you can use it um, in traditional foils, um, you can use it as cap highlighting, whatever you want to do. Uh, 10 volume is the only developer that we recommend for on scalp with ice cream, again, because it's going to act more like a 30. So we certainly wouldn't want to use 20 on scalp because it would act like a 40. Okay, the other really big rule about ice cream, again, this is not a rule that you can break. Ice cream is never to be used under heat, okay, because it already has that boosted lift in it. If you put it underneath heat, it will just take off to the moon in a really, really um, more destructive way to the cuticle. So this is really the product that you're gonna reach for when you've got those heavy, heavy color deposits. This is great for color corrections when you're working through a lot of old color and you want to keep your developer good, but of course you want to get that maximum liftability. I know that we've got a couple of educators that work heavily in the Hispanic markets and they absolutely love this product. Okay. Nancy, I know that you guys tend to use this a lot too. Do you have anything you want to add to ice cream? You know, uh, I, I am glad you're mentioning this. When I was, you know, at the beginning given this I thought it worked phenomenal. I didn't even know when I was first, first trying the line that there was other lighteners and I yeah. used it for everything and it lifted the way I wanted it. It was just really, really bizarre, but um, it makes sense, right? That the uh, developers also boost up a little bit more of the liftability. And uh, yeah, I think in the Latin market, this is a great product to use. Yep, absolutely. Again, great for color corrections. If you're working through some really, really old opaque color, this is absolutely ideal. Don't be afraid of it, guys. The way when we talk about this and we say that people are often afraid to use it because they're afraid to overlap onto old pre-light and tear, this is what I want you to think about. If you were using light, okay, and your client was light and then you made them, you know, brunette or like a little bit deeper come winter time and then come spring, if you know that you were comfortable going in with light and 30 volume on their hair, knowing that they have lightener on underneath that darker color, 
then you're okay to go in with ice cream and do the same. You just have to respect the fact that it's going to act like a boosted lightener. That's all. Okay, so that's the only thing that you have to keep in mind that's different about this is of course that we're not putting in any heat, but it is a boosted lightener. So make sure that you're respecting whatever you're putting on the hair, um, knowing that what the developer is actually going to perform like. Okay, so that's the big deal with ice cream. Okay, it's a wonderful, wonderful product. It lifts beautifully, super evenly, just like the light does. Okay, but it's just geared towards those dark, dark levels. There was a question that I yeah. think you just answered. I just want to make sure that Adele gets that this answer. Her question was, what was the difference between the two, light and ice cream? And I Perfect. So ice cream is going to be that traditional lightener. I'm sorry, light's going to be that traditional lightener that you can use 10, 20, 30, and 40 volume for in order to achieve up to seven levels of lift. Ice cream, you're only going to use 10 and 20 volume. 10 volume is going to give you results that we more commonly associate with 30 volume. And 20 volume is going to give you results that we more associate with 40. So this is really a much more boosted lightener than what a traditional light would be. Okay, so I hope that that helps. It's just a very powerful formula that allows you to use low developers to achieve some maximum lift. Okay, again, the mixing ratio would be the same as light, which would be a one to two for maximum liftability. All right, any others there, Nancy? We're good? Very good. Excellent. Okay, so these are just some images of ice cream in action. Again, Nancy did this first photo all the way to the left. We just She just chimed in with her love of ice cream as well. Kristen Burley, she's one of our educators on the call as well. She's provided this center image. And then we have Courtney Rivera who provided this image on the right. As you guys can see, I really chose these images to be able to show you the dark, dark bases that these were being used on. You can see on the image that Nancy did, that guest really did have quite a dark root and she was able to to lift her up beautifully and evenly, also very safely using ice cream. Same thing with Kristen's image, that root area, you can see her natural is quite dark. Same with Courtney. So that would be an ideal situation in order to use ice cream. Okay. Here's a really good question that came yeah. through. Um, and you just mentioned that ice cream has the power to lift over dark, but the question is, would you rather use ice cream over light? So it really depends. Um, Say I have a guest who is a level eight and she's trying to get to a 10. I really don't need, you know, to bring in something like ice cream to only go two levels. I know that I can get her in with light using just 10 volume and I can get her up to a level 10 with no problem at all. So again, the goal of really light, I think that a lot of people, when we talk about lightener, we go when it's just like, just get it as light as we possibly can. But hair is fragile. Okay, and when you're lightening hair, we have to make sure that we're really protecting that inner structure of the hair. So anytime you, that you're doing big lightening, you should really try to use as low developers as possible. At the end of the day, a 20 volume and a 40 volume are both gonna get you to the same exact level. Okay, a 10 volume is gonna take a lot longer and a 40 volume is gonna get you there a lot quicker. But the integrity of the hair between the two is gonna be the huge difference. It's exactly like the tortoise and the hair kind of analogy. You're all gonna to get to the finish line, but the quality of the hair at the end is all gonna make the difference based on what you choose for a tool. So again, if I'm working on a client who's a level seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you know, I don't really need to go in with ice cream and use something that's equivalent to a 30 volume. I can just use light. But if I have a client who's a level maybe five or below, and I'm trying to get them light, yeah, I'm absolutely going to reach for ice cream because I can keep my developer low, but still get the high impact results that I would have if I had used a higher developer. Okay, so that's the two big differences. Also, uh, the ice cream is ammonia free. So that's another big difference. Okay, I hope that helps. Excellent. All right, this is our newest addition to the Lightener lineup that we have offered. This is called the System Blonde. This is System Blonde 9 is going to give you up to nine levels of liftability. Ultra lifting powder lightener as well. Again, suitable for all lightening applications. This is gentle yet extremely powerful. I know uh, those of us who started using this, we absolutely love it, love it, love it. Um, I'm probably using this as much as I'm using light, to be honest with you, because of its versatility which is really, really great. Um, I will say just from my own experience with blonde, when I'm doing double process blondes, I would typically use light, but I've actually switched a lot of them over to using the system blonde because I feel like 
Um, when I'm going through and reworking sections of the hair that I've already been through and I'm trying to pull it apart and make sure I'm getting really proper saturation, I personally just find that the system blown and able to section that hair once it already has lightener on it much, much, much easier. It just kind of glides through the hair. It doesn't get um, as dried out as quickly, I feel like, as maybe the light does, um, especially for those applications in which I'm going back to a previous quadrant to go and make sure I'm getting saturation. It's just, it's really quite lovely. It's beautiful to work with. And it has definitely kind of been the, the love affair of our entire team. Okay, so this is what System Blonde is going to do for us. It's going to be able to achieve up to nine levels of lift, which is huge. This is definitely our big hitting lighteners in terms of liftability and in terms of levels. Okay, what makes System Blonde really great is that we use ZMAs to protect the inner structure of the hair. Again, at the forefront of the way we develop all of our lighteners is, of course, maintain the integrity of the hair. Guar gum for scalp comfort, which you guys also found that ingredient in light as well. So very comfortable to wear on scalp. And this also has maltose to improve, um, improve, moist, improve condition and moisturize the hair at the same time. You Again, that's when I kind of feel that difference. That maltose really lets me kind of section that previously lightened hair um, when that I'm working through and reapplying much, much differently than any other lightener that we have does. Again, you're going to be able to mix this at a one to two ratio for maximum liftability. You can use 10, 20, 30, and 40 volume with this product. This is unlike the ice cream where you could only use 10 and 20. 10 and 20 volume are going to be used for on scalp only with a system nine. Okay, it's going to stay active for 60 minutes, suitable for all applications and techniques. I really love this when I'm doing balayage work because um, it really just gives me that extra liftability through the mids and the ends that I need. Heat processing. We say that you can do it, although our disclaimer is that it's really not necessary to. System 9 is going to lift through a lot of levels regardless if you have heat in pre present or not. The advantage to not using heat is you control how quickly that liftability happens, which means you get a lot more evenness out of it. Okay, so nothing's going to particularly happen if you put under, it underneath heat in terms of anything terrible. Um, you can do it. I've played with it and I've done it. I personally find that my liftability at room temperature is far superior than what I get underneath heat. Okay, so mm -hmm. if you had to, you could do 10 and 20 volume under heat, although we don't typically recommend it and it's not necessary. On scalp application, you'll never use heat. Okay, and make sure that you don't cover it as well. Okay, so that's system nine. Do we have any questions on that so far, Nancy? No questions. Excellent. No, okay. just comments. People Good. love it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a keeper for sure. So these are just a couple of images of the system nine as well. Okay, you can see that it can be used, whoops, sorry, to um, maintain, whoops, I went backwards. Sorry, um, you can see that we can create some really beautiful kind of bronze finishes by using it. You get a lot of beautiful control. This client all the way on the left of mine, uh, she had a lot of previous color buildup and you can see that I was able to get a really beautiful, nice lift root to end by using System 9. Courtney, she's on our platinum type blonde. She's loving System Blonde. Kristen Burley also is a huge fan of it. And if there's anything you wanna add about why you love System Blonde, Go ahead and do that. She might be here. I'm here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I just love that it gives me the liftability that I need. Um, I really mean the anti yellow which I'm sure we'll talk about soon. But. Yeah. It, they were kind of they were launched at the same time and they really go hand in hand and it's a great addition to all of our laners. Again, we'll talk about that a little bit at the end as well. But it's just something new, it's something different. And you know, we're really always pushing the envelope in terms of how light we can make guests. And this particular product is really helping us kind of get there, which is great. But of course, it also leaves the hair in really mint condition, which is awesome. Okay, so it just has a little bit more liftability to it than the light did. Okay going to your um there's question there's a comment about system blonde but also i wanted to mention um for on scalp use i have well, one of my clients she's uh we're always doing a root touch up and uh, we go super light. Her hair has never looked healthier. And um, we've been using System Blonde since it launched and it's been the purest, lightest, cleanest blonde we've ever gotten from being a level two Asian hair, thick, coarse, and absolutely beautiful hair. This is on Nora, um, right, Nancy? That's Nora. Yep, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, one comment from Savannah. 
Um, I might I might have a comment for this one. I'll let you answer first. Yeah. Heather, um, I find the two to one ratio, the system blonde nine gets really, it gets really foamy after about 30 minutes. Any suggestions? Hmm. I have started adding color your way to help. Okay, is, is it, that's Savannah you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Savannah, are you finding, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Are you finding that the color your way when you add it in, does it really make a big difference? It does. It makes it a bit more of the clay lightener, but it's okay. like, it doesn't, if, if I don't do the two to one ratio, I, the consistency just isn't right. But okay. when I do it, it's a bit loose. And then I'll be like 10, 20 minutes into foiling and it just starts getting, it's, almost too creamy too foamy and so then I'm adding in the clay lightener and I feel like I'm just almost to like, like slow it down from like doing yeah I, okay. I like it a bit a bit of a thicker I just feel like it doesn't stick on the hair as well huh. like it just is too slippy and loose and yeah yeah they're using it with um the anti-yellow yes Okay, so in, I'm going to just share, this isn't anything manufacturer has said, but I'm going to share with you my own personal experience. I find that when I do use the anti-yellow, I feel like even though it's such a small, small amount, I almost feel like it shifts the consistency a little bit and it makes it a little bit looser. So I okay. would agree with you with that. I don't have a problem with it sticking to the hair so much and I'm not seeing it like blow up in the bowl or anything. It's not but, that um, it, it blows loosens up. It a little. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess probably... <laughs> Now that I'm, it's probably just my personal preference. I like yeah. a more clay like consistency. Yeah. Which the color your way would be a perfect option for that. Or what you could okay. do is, of course, go to a one to one and a half mix ratio. Okay. That was going to be my next, yeah. my next question. You if could, I could just do that. keep okay. in mind. Yeah. Absolutely. You have the, that's the thing is there's outlines, right? And then there's the freedom to kind of create and build off that. So okay. if you're going to move to a one and a half, one to one and a half ratio, all you have to take into consideration is that liftability is not going to be the manufacturer okay. standard. So okay. in that case, if I was using, um, say a 10 volume and I'm going to shift to one to one and a half, I might do a 15th okay. just to kind of help be able to get that liftability in that way. But that was a great question. That's perfect. Basically the difference you'll get out of a uh, shifting with that mix ratio. Perfect. Thanks, Heather. You're welcome. Um, what I was going to mention um, is uh, for a while now, I have been mixing my ratios or different bowls. So smaller quantities for me, always I always have a fresh batch, um, especially for Nora. I don't ever want it to get uh, any looser than the consistency of a two to one. But um, it was just going to be one of my suggestions if you just add. Oh, Nancy, bowls. thank you. You know what? I remember that you said that in a class that you did a while ago. And I, yes, I need to go back. To, I think I started doing that and then I just went back to the old way. Yeah. So I like that. okay. That's what we do with the hairdressers. I like, this is why I'm repeating the classes. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, and that's true. If you guys have been to um, the Lift and Tone course that Nancy had done quite a while, I mean, but when was that, Nancy? September, October? I can't remember. Yeah, no, I can't remember. And then we had a second one um, with burning yeah. too. So, yeah. So Nancy had done this great model. If you guys did come to that class, Nora, she had that really long hair with these beautiful bangs. And she, it was that when she had that kind of violety root and then it had the blue on the ends. Right. So if you had been to that class, that was the um, guest that Nancy was talking about that she does the double process lightening on, on the level two Asian hair. And you could really see in that, um, that finished result, how strong that hair still looked, which was amazing and how decolorized it got, but as cleanly as beautiful as, as it did was thanks to system nine. So awesome. All right, we good to move on, Nancy, any other? Yes, we're good. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is Blonde. Blonde is an ammonia-free lightning system that has an advanced on-scalp formulation, and it also features datum technology, okay? Blonde will provide up to five levels of lift in as little as 15 minutes under gentle heat. It is technology advanced. It's technologically advanced, and again, it's a two-part system. The two-part system is gonna sustain of this tube lightener, okay? And then it's also gonna come in a sachet. So what's really important, if, if you happen to be a sales rep on this call to jot down on this product in particular, is that for every one tube of blonde, you're going to make sure that your um, stylist is ordering four of these sachets, 
Okay, so um, one tube of blonde, four sachets makes the system complete and allows you to use that entire tube of product. Okay, we'll talk about the different components in a second. This provides a really dreamy lift in no time at all. Savannah, this might actually be a consistency that you really, really, really love. Um, so if you haven't tried out blonde yet, I would really suggest this. This consistency is ideal for freehand work. It glides on almost like a, um, like a jarred frosting. It's really beautiful to work with and paint with. It's absolutely a love affair. And I think that it's definitely a really underused product. I think a lot of times people can't understand when to use it or why to use it. So we'll go into that a little bit and why I love it. Okay, so this will provide up to five levels of lift. It does contain that datum technology to protect the hair during the lightning service. The mixing ratio on this is not something I expect you guys to ever remember off the top of your head. It's one of those things that every time I use it, I have to rejog my brain again. It's going to be 15 grams of the blonde cream, which was in that tube. It equals to be about a quarter of the tube. You're then going to open up one powder sachet at 25 grams, mix that in with that cream. And then you're going to use 15 grams of 10 to 40 volume, depending on how much liftability you're looking for. Okay, so that's a quarter of the tube plus one sachet plus 15 grams of 10, 20, 30, or 40 grams. It doesn't, uh, 40 volume. It doesn't seem like that little bit of developer would make it really creamy. But again, the cream portion of this is absolutely dreamy to work with. So it really does stretch a lot farther than you would think in terms of only 15 grams of developer. Okay, what makes this product awesome is that you're going to be able to get up to five levels of lift in as little as 15 minutes under gentle heat. The gentle heat guidelines is 104 to 108 degrees, which is also what the guidelines are for our color. So if you're using um, our dryer or any kind of other heat source for um, getting our color to work, you can use that same exact setting for this product as well. You can also use this at a 30 minute room temp process. Okay, if you're using it on scalp, you'll definitely want to only process at room temp for 30 minutes, and it is not recommended that 30 or 40 volume go on the scalp. This again is suitable for all lightning techniques, whether it be on scalp, off scalp, in meshes, foils, hand painted balayage, whatever you're looking for. The heat processing will allow you for an accelerated time and there's no heat use if it's on scalp. Okay, so people always say to me, so why am I going to use this? Why do I love to use this? In particular, when I'm working on guests who are level seven or an eight, in particular, and they have gray coverage, here comes the age old problem of I have their root coverage on and needs to sit, let's just say 45 minutes at room temperature. Then I need to go in and highlight them. I, ba I baby light them. Even if I use a 10 volume, I'm going to get to my desired result from my foils way quicker than I'm going to get full gray deposit. So a lot of times when you're working in those levels like seven, eight, nine, there it's always this push and pull of like, oh, I should really pull these foils off. But the color's actually only been on her root area, maybe 30 minutes. So now you're sacrificing integrity of liftability in those foils against actual gray coverage. So I find myself, I have a lot of clients that I work at that's level like seven, eight, that I do root coverage for, for gray coverage, as well as trying to give them a baby light. So this is the product that I always reach to when I'm trying to do that particular um, service, because I know that after those 30 minutes have passed, even though her uh, root color is going to stay on for 45, this product's really going to stop working after that 30 minute timing. Okay. So I don't have to worry about it just continually working, which is great. This is also really ideal for your guests that are in just for kind of like a lunchtime service. They only have an hour. They've got to get in. They've got to get out. Or maybe you have a guest that absolutely hates sitting and waiting for their hair to process. This is a great option for them as well. You can go ahead and do like, say, a partial foil with this, pop them underneath heat. They're going to be done in as little as 15 minutes. I don't often feel the need to tone when I'm using blonde. That datum technology really lifts the hair really beautifully and evenly that oftentimes I can just use the sun kissed result that it's lifted up to and I don't have to go ahead and, and color balance or anything like that after. So those are just a couple of great ways to use them. Men love using this product because it's quick and it's efficient. They're not sitting there waiting a long time. It's really comfortable to use on the scalp because it's more cream base. So this is kind of a hybrid between like a high lift color and a powder lightener. So if you can just imagine what those two would kind of work like together, this is what blonde is. So it's super essential that as you purchase this product that when you're ordering it, you're ordering one tube and again, four sachets. Okay. Any questions on this, Nancy? Oh, yeah. 
I Next. figured. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's go back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nancy's like, there's a thousand questions <laughs> in 10 seconds. <laughs> They're, they're great and some are comments as well. So a comment, um, I love this for caramels on brunettes yes. and for younger clients to first time uh, mm -hmm. highlight. Um, and then we have a question. Does a sachet measure 25 grams? So it's basically 15 grams of cream um, and then one sachet and then there's a question mark. Yes. Did I ask that correctly? Yep. So it'll be a quarter of the tube. So 15 grams is a quarter of the tube of the blonde cream. And then it's going to be one full sachet, which is going to be 25 grams. And then it's going to be 15 grams of the chosen developer. Mm -hmm. So it's a different mix ratio. It's one of those that I always kind of keep tacked up or post it, posted it up next to my color bar, or I just turn it over and all of the sachets and the tubes do have the mix ratio right on it as well. Okay. okay. Um Thank you. And then how can you figure out the temperature of your processor? Perfect. So if you're using an actual color processor, a lot of them have a digital um, arrows where you can move the heat up or down. It's going to tell you exactly what that temperature is. This is a great question, not only for this product in particular, but also just in color processing because our regular standard uh, permanent hair color also has a variant mixing time, uh, variant processing time where you can either process under gentle heat or you can process at room temperature. It's really important that you know what temperature your dryer's on. So I'm sorry to bore you with the dryer conversation, but we're going to have it and I'm glad you asked. So typically a hooded dryer is not geared to be a color processor. Okay, a hooded dryers were designed to process roller sets. Okay, so you put your little old ladies underneath the heat, you put their rollers in, and a, dry, a hooded dryer has a warm up time. Okay, and then it has like a working time where the temperature stays at what it is. And then it has a cool down time so that it actually goes and sets those curls in that roller set to that specific <laughs> shape. So why I talk about that is it's really important, number one, that you do not time your hooded dryers off the timer that's on the actual hooded dryer. You know how you can twist it up to be like 30 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it might be. Definitely don't do that, even if you're using this for color processing, because if you crank it up to say 25 minutes, if you're going to use it for color processing, it's going to have a period of five to 10 minutes of a warm up, and then it's going to give you a short window, maybe five minutes of an actual process at that heat that you're looking for. And then in that 25 minutes, it's going to have a cool down too. So it's really important that the heat stays consistent at 104 to 108. So a couple of really great tips are, of course, I suggest sit underneath that dryer. You can go and take those little um, sticky thermometers that you would like go ahead and just tack onto um, a child's head to test their temperature. You can go ahead and take one of those and just kind of hold it in the center of the dryer. Wait to see what that temp might be. Some hooded dryers are going to operate at medium heat at 104 to 108. Some of them are going to operate at high heat underneath that. So it's really, and this is going to vary by brand too. And age of your dryer and how often you clean it. Okay. So really important that you check in on all of those things and really get familiar with where your dryer sits. Is it medium or high heat where it's 104 to 108? What I would suggest doing too is say you're about to go and apply our color or you're going to go ahead and use a product like this. Go ahead and put that dryer on before your application begins so that dryer has a really good amount of time to warm up. And then once you sit that gas down, crank the, you know, crank the uh, timer up again so that it stays at that place. So that way it's not starting to cool down in the middle of your processing at all. And the full time that they're underneath that heat because you've preheated it will allow for the adequate deposit or in this case, liftability. So that's a couple of great ways that you can check the heat on your, if you're using a standard um, hooded dryer, okay? Okay. All right. I hope that covered um, that. Anything else, Nancy? Uh, I noticed that Candy had answered Alia, so thank you for that. And um, there was one more. Um, so it's active. This is about blonde. So it's only Perfect. active for 30 minutes. Yeah. So this is, was, again, what makes blonde really unique is if you're doing it at room temperature, it's going to give you activation for only 30 minutes. So again, if you're doing something like a root coverage, color at the same time, you can stop it from con continuing to lighten should you need to. I really love this for 
very simple services like um, like just a face frame. Say they're coming in, they were just retouching a money piece. It's something that's going to need to happen rather quickly, but they have a root color on the rest of their hair and that needs to process. Um, I don't necessarily want to do their root color and then go take another guest and then have to come back to put their foil on because they're a level eight and it's gonna lift too quickly, right? I wanna really touch that guest just once. So this product allows me to go and do the root, go ahead and do that face frame and know that it's only gonna do what it's gonna do over the course of 30 minutes and then stop. So I have um, reassurance on my end that if I had to be away from that guest a little bit longer than anticipated, I don't have to worry that that lightness is just gonna continually lighten. Okay, awesome. Any other questions on that? Um, yes, I answered one that was about how it was sold and then uh, does it stop processing under heat? Yep, so it'll be the same exact thing. It'll be able to give you the maximum 15 minutes lift and then after that gentle heat, uh, under gentle heat and then after that time, you're really not going to get much liftability out of it at all. Okay. What's also really important about Blonde is because it is a timed lightning system, it's only going to go be able to go through as many levels of lifts as the developer that you've really chosen. So if you're looking for like one or two levels of lift, this would be the situation that you are maybe doing it on a level eight, you can go ahead and be safe to use 20 volume. If you're working on say someone who's a level six or seven, you're gonna have to pump up your developer because you're only gonna have 30 minutes of working time to be able to do so. So if you're really looking for a full five levels of lift, in this case, this is a product that you would go in and safely be able to use 40 volume to do that with. Otherwise, if you're only working under a 30 minute time um, crunch, you're not going to be able to get that full five levels of lift. Okay. Um, this is not a product that I would really go to if I was doing like a full head of foils or anything. Like Nancy had mentioned previously when talking about six um, system nine blonde, is that you do want to keep your lightener relatively fresh. So if I can help it at any time when I'm doing, say, like a full foil or anything, I'm going to remix my lightener at each quadrant because I want it to have its full liftability at each time. I don't want to be using something at the back of my nape and then I get to the front of my head and that lightener's kind of seen its day and it's putted out all of its strengths. So unless you're going to plan on remixing for every single quadrant on a person, um, on a system like Blonde, it's not probably what I would use as my conventional lightener in this situation or as in my, you know, full foil lightener. This is great for face frame. This is great for men's. This is great for lunchtime highlights. I'm going to show you guys a technique a little bit later um, that, that this would be wonderful for. So this is really a system to use when you can get the product on the hair quickly. Maybe you're just doing 10 foils here or there with a root retouch. Um, so that's when you would really be more geared to use a product like this, not for a traditional, you know, full foil that's going to take you an hour to apply or anything. Okay. All right. How are we doing? We're good. You can. Good. All right. <laughs> Excellent. So these are just a couple images of blonde. Um, I just chose these to show you guys instead of um, some others, because I wanted to show you that these were not toned after. Okay, this is just its pure liftability, what it leaves you at. Um, you can see that the images are both can give a really nice bronzed kind of bronzy appearance to the hair. The hair doesn't look like it has raw lightener on it or it's um, really exposed. It looks, the cuticle still looks beautiful. That datum technology makes the hair look really still really strong. But again, it's really even liftability and it's not toned. So this is a really great option you know, to use when you, these, both of these girls did not do a root color. They were just a quick, you know, 10 foil technique to work through, get the product on quick and then just use whatever it listed to. So that's why I wanted to show you guys that. Okay. Excellent. We'll move on to Platinum Ice. Platinum Ice, uh, we've had for quite a few years now, but this is going to be an additional ammonia-free lightning. This is actually a cream, guys, which is really unique and different. Um, and it's going to be able to provide up to eight levels of lift. It's a high-performing, unique system that restores moisture and provides op optimal scalp protection while lifting, all with a creamy consistency. I know that Nancy absolutely loves using this on double process um, guests because of the comfort that's on the scalp. And there's a photo coming up in a little bit that she can explain to you how she liked to use that. This is really going to be kind of a blend between a cream-based lightener and an oil-based lightener. So if you really like that working consistency, this is going to be a really great bet for you. What makes uh, Platinum Ice quite different, again, is that it's ultra hydrating and provides a lot of moisture and nourishment to the hair as well as the scalp. Rice and wheat protein are kind of the all-star products that allow that to happen. It's gonna, again, be able to provide up to eight levels of lift. Because this is a really unique multifaceted 
type product, you want to make sure that when you get the little pouch that you manipulate it before use. And it even has a little sticker on it that reminds you to do so. Um, you want to make sure that you're working that product all the way through as things in that pouch can settle in time, just like anything else, because it is, again, a multi-ingredient uh, in terms of um, consistency-based products, you really want to work it quite well. So the mixing ratio on platinum ice is going to be a little bit different because it is a, a cream oil blend. It's going to be one to one mix ratio and you can use 10, 20, 30 and 40 volume with that. Okay. If you're using it on scalp, you'll probably want to increase that mix ratio to a one to two as it's much easier and kind to work with at that mix ratio. The number one thing that I hear from people that use platinum ice is that their double process blondes feel so much more comfortable having this on their scalp for the full processing time. So I have shifted essentially all my double processes to either be with this or with system nine again for the use of scalp comfort as well. It's going to be active for up to 60 minutes. It can be used for all lightning techniques. It can go in foils, freehand balayage, so on and so forth. And because it truly is um, an ammonia free lightning system, you do not want to use heat with this product. Okay. This again is a really great option if you're doing a root color and then you just want to kind of freehand in some face framing around the, um, the hairline. It's working consistency is really just beautiful to do so and you can kind of just go in and paint really quickly and then be done with it, which is great. Okay. Any questions on platinum ice, Nancy? Um, yes. There's a, a comment from Amanda asking, does anyone have oily stuff leak out of their packaging? Oh, I um, haven't had that. Yeah, you know what? I think maybe maybe only one of my pouches felt a little slippery, but it wasn't okay. leaking. I checked it, and I don't know where that came from. I thought it was from where I store. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm in San Diego, so it's a little warm. And yes. I wasn't sure <laughs> if that was it. Um, also, um, in our new packaging, you will notice that it will say it's uh, up to six levels of lift. Mm -hmm. So that is new, um, and that will be different now. From Perfect. Yeah, yeah it, that's a really great point that Nancy brought up is that um, she's in San Diego. I'm in Rhode Island. Com couldn't be farther away from each other, actually. <laughs> but the climate really does play a big part in a product like this. In San Diego, that heat is really kind of in there. The nice warm temperature doesn't keep um, your platinum ice from getting difficult to manipulate and manipulates really quite nice. Here in um, New England where it's, it's quite colder, when you first pick up that pouch, you can really feel how kind of stiff it is. So really keep manipulating it until you start to feel that it kind of more loosely kind of moves around in that package. That's when you know that it's man been manipulated enough and ready to use. The colder temperatures just kind of clamps everything up a little bit here in the Northeast and that can definitely affect your performance of the product and your ease in getting it out of the pouch if you haven't manipulated it in a bit. So that's really quite helpful as well. Okay, any other questions on platinum ice? Um, yeah, somebody's asking, Joshua is asking if uh, we can put a processing cap uh, when processing on the scalp. Um, I will say, I say yes, if, you're, if your area is too cold. I honestly, if um, we have the AC, I don't, I, I'm comfortable with room temperature all the time with this product, but some of my, um, you know, my, the girls in the salon like to crank up the AC and I, I, you know, everybody has a preference. So I do put them with a cover very loosely, very loosely. Yes. Yeah. It's not often, I would agree with that. The only time that I'm really doing that mostly is in summer when we've got the air conditioning cranked down really low. Um, other than that, it's not affecting my ability to get liftability out of it. It's not going to hurt. Essentially what you're doing is I'd be, you know, we say never use heat in terms of an added heat source. You can absolutely go ahead and use this in foils or anything like that. You just want, don't want to bring an exterior source that's blowing warm air down into it. So if you had to cap it for any reason, you'd be fine. Um, but yeah, don't just, don't add it, added heat source. That's all. Excellent. Um, Thank you. There was uh, another Alia asking, um, she probably missed what I mentioned about, is there a new formulation in that only lifts six levels now? Mm -hmm. No, we basically are changing just what the packaging says um, because since we launched uh, System, Le uh, System Blonde level nine, that is our, you know, the, the product that we have found that lifts up to a higher level. And just an experience, we can get up to eight levels with platinum ice. Um, it just takes a little longer. And we now are saying that it lifts up to six levels. It was just more convenient to write it that way. 
yeah. in the new the, package. What do you think? The, yeah, no, absolutely. The introduction of System 9 kind of changed and shifted everything. At the time, Platinum Ice was definitely our heavy hitting lightener, but then when um, System 9 came out, it really kind of shifted expectations of higher lift lightning options. So again, that's the reason behind that. I've been able to get eight levels of lift out of Platinum Ice should I need to. Um, obviously, if I'm working through super, super old um, pulled through color time and time again, it's not going to have that much success in it. I think a level six levels of lift is far more, um, substan um, of a good expectation yeah. for something like that. Yeah. I would go for system nine otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So um, this is that image, Nancy, I just wanted you to talk about why you chose platinum ice on that one particular client that you did. Okay. So for my guy, Derek, he has a sensitive scalp um, he had alopecia about four years ago. So as light as he likes to go, um, he's not budging on not being blonde. And uh, <laughs> so we go with platinum ice. It is super gentle on his scalp. Um, in the past, I have added protein additive. Um, and I think one time I forgot and he didn't have sensitivity. So just the lone platinum ice, super ultra gentle, um, very creamy consistency that it's easier to apply and short. Like for, for this particular one, it just glides through his hair. So that was a perfect option for him. Um, and yep, this is, um, this is why we choose that. I, I wanted to say also, I tend to go with a lot of my no ammonia lighteners on people with sensitive scalp and mm. also with um, issues like for him was alopecia I had I've had had ladies that have had uh, cancer in the past and they just I just want to keep them safer I think the word the saying the pneumonia just like feels more comfortable for them and um, and they're just they're just worry free so I just wanted to men mention that about ice cream as well Yes, yeah, I would agree this, this client that I have at the bottom left over here, this double process, she always loved being as light as humanly possible, but um, traditional lightener was just really kind of wreaking havoc on her scalp. So once we switched her over to platinum ice, when this first came out, I said, Aaron, I have the best thing for you. We switched it over and now um, she doesn't sit there the whole time, you know, poking her head with a rat tail comb or asking me how much longer she has to go. She's a lot more comfort on her scalp. She does suffer from psoriasis. So the rice and the wheat protein that are that is inside of this platinum ice really, really calms and soothes her scalp during that process. So again, any, like Nancy said, anyone with scalp conditions or issues, this is a great option for. Okay, you'll see that these next two, the one in the middle over here by Monica, one of our national educators, this was put in foils and she was able to get this beautiful weedy lift with that. And then all the way to the right, Courtney Rivera, this was a freehand application. Courtney loves, loves, loves using platinum ice for freehand work because of its consistency. So that's that on platinum ice. Okay, so we've got two more left to go. This is Spectrum. Um, we did have a great class on this a while back. This is just kind of gonna give you another refresh on it if you have not been introduced to it yet. This is gonna be a quick and easy solution when highlighting and toning all in one process, which is great. So this is going to be a three-part system, which allows you to process in one step. So this three parts is going to contain your lightning powder, Okay, this is unique to the system. So you need to use this lightning powder with it. It's also gonna come with six toners. Okay, everything green, yellow, neutral, red, violet, and the blue toner. Okay, and then it's going to come with the developers that are specific to Spectrum as well. So these toners are actually pigments that are going to get mixed right into the powder lightener with the developer and allow you to get uh, liftability all in under 20, all in under 12 minutes under heat. And this also has the help of Datum Plus to make the hair feel fantastic. Can be used for on and off scalp applications as well. So we're gonna do a walkthrough here on how we're using Spectrum and as far as the mix ratio. Your mix ratio is going to be two parts of your powder lightener. Okay, you could this come, you can use scoops or you can go ahead and measure it, which is what I do. So two parts of lightener two parts of the chosen developer. Again, this developer has to be specific to the spectrum offerings developer. This will be an eight volume, a 22 and a 30. And then you're going to do one to two parts of your pigment of choice. So you can, we say one part here, but this little asterisk shows you down here that you can do up to two parts for maximum tonal deposit. Okay, so two 
two to one, two parts lightener, two parts developer, one to two parts of the toner. The processing is going to be really, really quick on this product. This is a heat activated product. So what's going to happen is while you've got it sitting on the hair, it's not going to do much. Once you get it underneath heat, its liftability is gonna kick into high drive and work rather quickly. The processing is going to, can be anywhere from two to 12 minutes, okay? So it's really important that every two to three minutes, you're actually checking that heat source, whether you're lifting up your dryer and you're opening up the foils or whatever it might be and checking to see on the liftability again, because it does happen quite quickly, okay? So this is how we're choosing the pigments. So we've got some cool tones over here. This would be your violet toner, your blue toner, and your green toner. What I love about Spectrum is it really forces you to know your color wheel. So I often like to place this in, in schools, cosmetology schools, or this is really great to use if you guys have assistants or apprentices that you're working with and trying to get them really comfortable with color. This is a wonderful, wonderful tool to use. So for instance, um, you're going to choose your blue toner when you are trying to neutralize through orange. So when you're working through levels um, here, six, seven, eight, you're going to go ahead and use your blue toner to help with that. Okay, this is another way that we're showing it here. If you're working on a natural base nine to 10, the dominant tone in the hair is of course yellow and you're going to choose violet in order um, to neutralize that out. Natural base eight, seven, and six, we will go ahead and use, orange will be the dominant tone. So we'll go ahead and use blue to neutralize that. And then natural base is five down to one, red will be that underlying tone. So we're gonna use green to do that. So again, you guys can see why I like using this for somebody getting really comfortable with the color wheel, because if you're not using the correct spectrum tonum, you're not going to get that neutralizing really perfectly. Okay, so this is just a great way to kind of explain it, that chart and all of these next images you will actually see right on the, um, the swatch book for Spectrum. All these great tools are right there. Okay, so these cool tones are going to be used to go ahead and reduce the warmth in the hair, uh, cool everything down a little bit, get a little bit of control and to, in order to tone down the dominant hair tones that are found throughout the lifting process. The warm toners we also have available. This will be red, neutral, and yellow. These are actually going to go ahead and increase the warmth in the hair. Um, using, for instance, the neutral or the red on someone who's a natural redhead is just the most beautiful, beautiful highlight throughout their hair. It doesn't scream, hey, I just have raw lightener on my hair and I don't know how else to highlight a blonde, but besides making them yellow, um, which you often see. So it's really nice to be able to go in with the red or the neutral or even one part red, one part neutral on someone who's a natural redhead and really bring some beautiful um, shimmery kind of sun-kissed finish to their hair that doesn't necessarily look like a blonde highlight. So that's uh, my favorite way to use the warm toners. Uh, the developers, your choices are going to be, for instance, if you're looking to get four up to four levels of lift, you'll use eight volume. Up to five levels of lift, you can go ahead and use 22. And if you're looking for a maximum of five levels of lift, this is for dark faces only, you're going to go ahead and use the 30. And we never want to use 30 volume for on scalp application. That's pretty much the case across the board again with all lighteners. Okay, so choose your cool toners, your warm toners based on if you're trying to reduce warmth or enhance. Okay, this is what the inside of that swatch chart looks like. This uh, swatch chart that we have for Spectrum is really great. It gives you all the hints and tips that are needed to be able to have great success with Spectrum. But all in all, this is a really, really easy system to work with. This swatch chart just kind of shows you what's to be expected out of the results. So for instance, if I'm working on green, I see that the base is level four. If I were to use an eight volume, this is what my result would be like, 22 volume and then a 30 volume. Okay. And if I was working, say, down here in the warm tone section, and I was working on, say, a level four, if I were to use eight volume, this is the result that I would get. It's a beautiful, nice kind of strawberry blonde. 22 would just get a little bit more pastelized, and 30 would get a little bit more pastelized after that. So this, this is just how you use that swatch chart in order to give you an idea of uh, how much lift you're going to be able to get and what that finished tone will be. So this will come right with that system as well. Okay. Any questions so far, Nancy, on just the tones and how to mix? Yes. In fact, yeah. uh, there's two different ones, and I think they're relatively almost the same thing. So okay. one from Amanda, will this stop processing if you're using it along with color that processes longer? 
Okay, that's a great question. So Amanda, in this situation, this really is a timed system. So you don't want to leave it on longer than the 12 minutes once it's underneath heat, because what will happen is if it's left on longer, the lightener will actually go through and eat through the pigment that you've chosen. So it's really going to make it in that case more of like a standard lightener. So um, that's the situation on that. What you could do though, is say you're doing a root retouch and it's um, <clears throat> great coverage. You can process them underneath heat, their full 25 minutes, and then pull them out from the heat. You can go ahead and you know paint this onto the hair, put this in foils, however you wanna do this, and then place them back underneath heat for the, the processing time of up to 12 minutes, just checking every two to three minutes for um, to see if it's finished. It's never gonna hurt to leave your gray coverage on longer. Okay, so that's the really kind of unique thing about being able to use our permanent hair color with a system like this is that it can go back underneath heat should need it. It's not going to do anything to hurt the color in any way. So I hope that answered that. Was that how we sit with that, Nancy? Yeah, that was that was for that. And the okay. other question was, um, so <clears throat> so you won't use this when you're using or processing other color. And I think you just mentioned that part so yeah, yeah um, you certainly can you can mm -hmm. yeah you certainly so. can it's just really important for instance if you're processing the other color that you're letting the color do its processing first and then adding spectrum to it and not putting them on both at the same time and then letting them process because with our permanent color you cannot split processing either so it's not like you can do half of the processing at room temperature and then just put it underneath heat for 25 minutes and it's going to be done you have to pick and choose so that's what's kind of nice about this though is that if you wanted to do this system with gray coverage, put them underneath their heat for their gray coverage time, pull them out, go and apply your foils, your face frame, however you want to use spectrum, then pop them back under. Odds are that whole process is going to still take a lot less time than if you were going to do it the traditional way and wait for a lightener to do its job to slowly lift up. Okay. We use this in our salon um, when we had assistants or apprentices, things like that, um, where it took them a really long time to do a full foil, for instance, you know, maybe it took them an hour and a half in the beginning. We can all remember that it took us a long time to do services like that. So it takes them a really long time to get the product on. But what's really great is that you could save time for them by letting that processing happening really quickly under room temp. So at the end of the day, my full foil and then a brand new stylus full foil might have taken the same amount of time. I used traditional lightener. They went ahead and used spectrum, got that liftability into only 12 minutes where mine would not have been able to do that. So it's a really good tool if you're an owner or you're a mentor and you're working with younger stylists or brand new stylists, apprentices, that this is a great way to get them, A, super familiar with the color wheel, and two, get their processing to be a bit faster. Okay. Any questions? Uh, yep. So can this be applied on damp hair? Um, it really needs to be blasted dry in order to get that full liftability. Any lightener done on damp hair is going to lessen how much liftability you get. So this can also be reapplied. So let's just say you went ahead and did a root color, um, uh, double process blonde and that they didn't get all the way up to where you needed them to be. You could go ahead and shampoo it, blast the hair dry, then reapply right onto the root area to get that liftability. So yep, it's really important. It goes on dry hair. And one that you will love. Uh, because it's about Vitaplex. Can, oh, good. You add, mm -hmm, can you add Vitaplex and do you have to bump up the developer? You can use Vitaplex in any of our lighteners. You can also use it in color. And the really unique part about Vitaplex is that you do not have to bump the developer. You're just going to work out whatever developer you would have chosen. So that's what makes Vitaplex really great is you don't have to do that. Okay. Okay, that's it. All right, so this is a recap on spectrum. Again, up to five levels of lift, even through color-treated hair. This is an ammonia-free system that has datum technology in it, which will allow us one process lifting and toning for on and off scalp. Two-part spectrum powder lightener, two-part spectrum cream developer, and one to two parts of the spectrum pigment makes up how you mix that. Two to 12 minute process time. Of course, we're going to visually check that every two to three minutes because it does happen quite fast. This would be suitable for all techniques in which heat can be applied. Okay. We have people that balayage with this and absolutely love it. And they actually just use blow dryers and kind of keep the heat on those mids and ends the whole entire time. 
You can also, underneath a color process would be ideal for something like that. This is also really great and comfortable for on scalp applications. This product is heat activated. It will not give you that liftability without heat, okay? If you're doing it on scalp, just go ahead and cap before adding heat and the 30 volume is not re recommended for on scalp processing. Excellent. Uh, do I have Kristen Burley on still? Yep, I'm here. Hey, you want to walk us through Erin? Sure. Yeah, um, so Erin kind of likes to change her color back and forth a little bit. So we were looking to do a multi-tonal piece on her. So I used a spectrum with two different pigments added in, so in separate bowls. Um, so she got a partial foil. Um, formula one was 15 grams of the violent pigment, 30 grams of the lightning powder, and 30 grams of the 22 volume. Um, so you can see that gave her kind of those lighter, more creamy pieces. And then I also used the neutral pigment in a separate formula. Um, so I did 15 grams of the neutral pigment, 30 grams of powder, and 30 grams of 22 volume, just to give her a little shift on her natural base and give her some multi-tonal dimension. Awesome. This is exactly why I love using Spectrum. Um, when you have that guest that wants um, some really nice kind of creamy, icy pieces, but they also want some really beautiful weedy blonde pieces and they want a lot of dimension within their blonde, Kristen, in this situation, on Erin was able to go in and provide that really multi-tonal dimensional look. Again, so much faster than if she had to do it the traditional way. If Kristen was going to do this traditional way, she would have gone ahead and used light or any other lightener lifted her all the way up and then during the toning process would have to go in and kind of pinwheel through the two different kind of pigments in order to provide that really dimensional finish which of course takes a lot of time so the great thing is is that Kristen could go ahead and do this get multi-tonal all in one step could skip the toning option and could get processing in under 12 minutes which is amazing so thanks for your contrib uh, contribution on that one Kristen it's a perfect visual to explain why spectrum is so fun to use yeah, of course. Awesome. Thanks. And then I have Nancy. We can shift over back to Nancy again. Nancy worked on Caitlin here. And if you just want to walk us through your formula on this and why you chose to use Spectrum. Okay. So Caitlin uh, does this often where she grows out her hair, donates it, and we start all over again. <laughs> so I don't get to see her much, but she likes natural looks because she will definitely leave it on and just go on, right? And I won't see her again. So for Caitlin, very gentle formula, but yet she got what she wanted and she needed a change is what she was saying. Um, and what we wanted to do was give her different tonalities in the hair by still making it look natural. So for her first formula, the 20 uh, grams of the lightning powder with uh, 20 grams of the 22 developer was to give her the yellow tones. I The yellow tone, uh, when it comes out of the tube, it gives you the appearance that it might be like a, like a color dynamic, but it definitely is used as a toner just to evenly deposit the, the golden tones while the hair is lifting. So this is, to me, uh, using the yellow toner, it just, I need to add no toner at the end. It really gives the tones of the yellowy, golden, sorry, not yellow, golden, um, and it just makes it look natural. For her second formula, we went with a neutral formulation. And again, this one was to give it more of a little bit of a brownish. Um, and those you can see maybe towards the back, we concentrated with the yellow toner in the front. So this was um, more of a low light, if you were say, but still making it lighter with a neutral tone. And yeah, that was for Caitlin. Awesome, awesome. Looks so good. But you can see she's got a ton of coverage with that. Nancy definitely probably took way more time putting the foils in than processing, which oh, is what nice. makes this great. <laughs> okay, it's one of those things where, you know, if you're doing a partial, it takes you 30 minutes, you're gonna, you're gonna cut that time right in half with processing, which is awesome. And again, you can see that even using that yellow toner, that's why I really chose this image to show you guys is because I think a lot of times people don't tend to use it because they think that they're trying to not have yellow in the hair when they're lifting, but it's such a refined, refined, beautiful finish. It just aids in reflection, making that light just kind of dance off those blonde pieces so it's not so flat. So I hope that this image in particular was able to really show you what a yellow uh, pigment added in could actually do for the hair. It's not scary at all. 
Okay. And I know us on the East coast and up in um, the Chicago area, we just never want to use anything that's warm. So I wouldn't have thought that using a yellow toner would give me this result. So this is a really great way to show you guys that. Okay. Any questions on spectrum? Yeah. So um, I think Charles was asking something that uh, didn't finish the typing. Uh, Charles, would you like to unmute yourself? Hi, Charles. Yes. Hi. Hey, so uh, just have a quick question. So I have, we have clients that come into our salon that are levels like one through five and some of them come in with box color. Okay. Now, we utilize, we have here ice cream as well as light, as well as nine level lift. Okay. What would be the, so what would be the processes of them coming in with level one through five box color going up to bronze and platinums safely? Yeah, you know, and that's a great question. And I'm happy to tell you that the three options that you guys have in stock, it's probably going to be your best bet for sure. I think the system line is going to help you quite a bit. The ice cream would also be a really, really ideal option because it's going to allow you to take super dark levels. Like you mentioned, one through five, use a low developer and get them a lot of liftability, um, but keeping that developer really low. So I think the tools that you actually have on hand are going to be the best tools that I would choose for specifically what you're looking forward to do. Okay. And then uh, for the developer wise, would we just, would we use like the, like you said, 10 and 20? Uh, yeah. Uh, vice versa. So on ice cream, it's mm -hmm. going to be 10 and 20 only. 10 volumes going to act like 30. 20 volumes going to act like 40. Okay? okay. The light and the platinum ice so you said, sorry, you said you had platinum ice or was it system nine? No, uh, system nine. System nine. Perfect. So your light in your system nine, you can use uh, developers one through 40. And then I would really suggest to choose that developer based on how the hair feels. So if the hair feels a little bit damaged, I would definitely go a really sensitive route, go in with the 10 volume and go nice and low and slow. Okay. And then also adding in Vitaplex if need be, correct? Totally. That is going to be the game changer for you. Vitaplex okay. is what's going to allow you to keep the hair feeling good, even if you have to use a 30 volume. Okay. So I'm going to talk about Vitaplex a little bit at the end, but yeah, okay. I think that you have the perfect tools at your disposable at your okay. disposal. Do you have uh, anti-yellow yet? Yes, we do have that. All right, entire... perfect. You're in great shape, my friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Excellent. And All right, so he... yeah, go ahead, Nancy. Sorry. Um, so Alia is asking um, if she wanted to give a, a clear gloss after a partial on a spectrum, yeah. what product will we use just to make it shiny and pretty? So you're really going to be able to get a lot of beautiful shine out of Spectrum on its own because it does have that datum technology built into it. So if you haven't played with it yet to see the kind of shine that it can deliver on its own, I would suggest that you do. But if you were looking for just a clear gla glazing option, we have a couple. You can actually use our satin collection, which has a 0 .000, which is clear. That gets mixed with its satin activating cream at a one to two ratio. So that would be a great option for that. That's an ammonia free option. Or you also have within the color dynamics range, a product that's called Pastelizer. Pastelizer you're going to use, it's actually really great because it's gonna double as a conditioner in the hair. So you would just go ahead and rinse off spectrum, shampoo it, towel dry, and then go ahead and apply the Pastelizer in the hair. It, feels like conditioner, it looks like conditioner, but that can also act like a clear gloss product as well. And you're gonna leave that on the hair anywhere from about 15 to 30 minutes, okay? I use that option a lot when I'm trying to get someone into a clear glossing option. Maybe I don't do color on them at all, but I want them to leave with something on their head. Pastelizer is a great option. It's super cost effective. Um, I want to say, I can't promise you on prices because it's different across the board with distributors, but for the most part, I want to say it's under $14. And pretty much I charge a dollar a minute when it's left on. So if I have someone that I'm leaving it on for a full 30 minutes, I'm going to charge $30. So in only one service, I've, that product has paid for itself more than double. So again, I don't feel that you necessarily need to with a product like Spectrum because that datum is going to give you a lot of shine. But if you wanted to do just a clear glossing options, those would be the two top ones I would use. 
Okay. Um, I know that we need to move on, uh, Heather, but I wanted to just make a comment. Yes, yeah. Spectrum is super shiny. I have one of my regular clients for Spectrum say the last time she came in, um, can we change the, uh, the the lightener this time? I kind of wanted to be roughened up a little bit because it's yeah. just too shiny. <laughs> she likes the problem. 80s blown up cuticle. And I said, well, I don't even know if any of our liners will do that. But I it know. was a funny comment that she made. <laughs> it's um, so true, though. It Everything feels so good. In the hair it's a great problem to have yeah we'll just get her on some uh mode salt spray instead then she can yeah. tease out that hair <laughs> yeah excellent yeah, that's what we did <laughs> so we wanted to show you guys here with that spectrum does come in an intro kit it will contain all of the pigments it will contain to develop her needed as well as lightning powder whoops what i love about the free support pack that you get with that full kit is you guys will see these bowls right here these are all interlocking bowls and they actually look like a color wheel, which is pretty fantastic. I absolutely love them. So when you're using multiple tones um, in your spectrum, you can put them in different bowls so you can signify what colors you're working with. I also just love them as bowls to use when I'm doing multiple colors. It reminds me what I'm doing. And of course it comes with these great brushes as well. Um, the brushes are all the same color as the bowls, which are nice. Okay, it comes with seven of those guys. So that's the, the free, um, that's the free support pack that comes with the full spectrum intro kit. Okay. Last guy we have here is Spirit Lights. This is a completely new lightener that we had. We've only had this about a year and a half. Okay, this is a great way to achieve the softest multi-tonal type looks. So this is great for balayage and ombre looks that your client's looking for when they want that nice shimmery sun-kissed balayage. This is not a product that you're using if your client is a level three and wants to be a level 10 balayage. This is for someone looking for a super natural kind of finish to the hair. As you guys can see in my hair through my ends, I've got these little bits that are a bit lighter, but pretty much still in the same tonal family. I can just go in and spirit lights and do this myself because of the consistency, work it through my hair, and I can get that really sun-kissed kind of look throughout my hair, okay? It has diverse and refined tonal options in it, which will deliver beautiful results. This system is similar to Spectrum in that it's going to be another three-part system. So you have your powder lightener, you have your pigment, Okay, and then you're going to use your regular 10 through 40 volume developers. You don't have to use a specific developer on this like you did in the spectrum. Okay, excellent. So this is going to be your mix ratio options. You have a lot of options with spirit lights. Okay, if you're looking for a balayage mix, a really nice fluid mixture and texture for balayaging, you're going to go ahead and do a one to one and a half ratio. So 60 grams powder, 90 grams cream developer. If you're looking for a hand painting mix, this is one of my favorite mixes to use. You're just going to use equal parts developer and lightning powder. And if you're looking for the spirit lights mix, which is a really unique thick consistency, which will give you really controlled application, you're going to use one and a half to one. So it'll be 60 grams of powder to 40 grams of lightener. Once you've chosen the mix ratio and the technique that you would like to use, you're then going to go ahead and add your spirit lights pigment. Okay, so really variable mix ratio based on what you're looking to do. Keep in mind more than anything that you're going to get less liftability as your mixture gets a little bit thicker. Okay, but in all this will be able to provide up to three levels of lift. So choosing the correct pigment and quantities. This um, little chart that you guys see here will be on the back of all of the pigment boxes as well, which is really handy. So for instance, if I'm going to use the blue tone, I'm looking to reduce orange and yellow pigments and my client is a base level eight and I'm going to use this, you, I will actually take my tube and, dr and draw right onto the ruler right here up to one centimeter, wipe it off and then put it right into the bowl. So that measurement is right on the back of every single box and it's encouraged that you use that for measuring, okay? We're measuring in centimeters here, which is if you're in the States, not our common use of measuring. So I have no idea what a centimeter is unless I'm using that little chart, okay? So here you're gonna be able to choose what pigment you're looking for. We already talked about how, when I would use the blue, I would use the violet or the silver when I'm reducing yellow tones. I would use the brown when I'm trying to enhance natural warm tones and the beige for a little bit more subtle warm tones. So you're gonna go ahead and choose which base you're starting at, use the appropriate amount of pigment 
and then mix it right into your mixture, okay? These are a little bit different from Spectrum. I find that they're more like of a pearly kind of finish. These pigments, uh, personally, I found that. I absolutely love them. They're beautiful to work with. Really nice when you're doing multi-tonal balayage because I can go in with, say, the beige balayage in with a lower developer and then go in with the violet or the silver and use a higher developer. And I know exactly what pigment I did last because they look different on the hair. It's awesome to work with. Again, that really sun-kissed, beautiful look. Up to three levels of lift, unique lift and tone system that has moisturizing oils and protect... Oh, sorry, I lost my ears. Hang on. Sorry, guys, I'm back. Okay, it has protective corn protein, which provides suppleness and protection to the hair, both for on and off scalp. Okay, variable mixing ratio, which we already talked about for balayage, hand painting, and the spirit lights mix. It will process 20 to 60 minutes. What makes this product really unique and different is that when the product actually dries out, it will stiffen and that's when you know that it's done. So if you go and you take that hair and you kind of spread it apart and it still looks creamy in the middle, then you know that that product still can actually continue to lighten. But if you kind of open it up and it looks like it's dried out, then you can go ahead and remove it. Okay, suitable application. It's suitable for all different kinds of techniques. If you do put this product in foil or meshes, you may actually yield more liftability than three levels of lift, which is handy to know. Okay, um, it's just one of these products that if you are not really comfortable balayaging or hand painting, what's great about Spirit Lights is this is the lightener that you want to get to really get comfortable. Uh, we always talk about how this um, mix ratio makes balayage and hand painting so easy that even your granny could do it. Okay, without any kind of training or anything, uh, this mix ratio is perfect for the people that are learning to get comfortable with balayage and more freehand techniques. So if that's you, go ahead and try this out because you're going to love it. And the more you use it, the more comfortable you'll get. You'll start to get that hand motion down and then you can move to other lighteners should you choose to. Okay. Spirit lights I used on my guest Emily here. This I chose to use the hand painting mix at a one-to-one -one ratio. Did 40 grams of spirit light powder, 40 grams of 30 volume developer, one centimeter of the beige pigment and one centimeter of the violet just to give her that really beautiful sun-kissed look. I just want it to look like she's been at the beach for a, a whole week. So that's what I did and I went and balayaged it right into her hair and we were able to get this really ultra, ultra natural, beautiful sun-kissed blonde finish. So that's Spirit Lights on my guest, Emily. Does anyone have any questions on Spirit Lights? No questions. Feeling good? You want to take us through Caitlin real quick? Uh, yes. Um, so here is Caitlin with her regrowth. Um, we normally do Spirit Lights on her. She has been getting lighter and lighter because it's just happened while she was here in California. She actually just moved to uh, Candy's neighborhood <laughs> and, um, and she's in touch with her. And it's lovely to know that she can continue to use Spirit Lights because she loves it. But she does pull very warm, especially at her root. So we chose the blue pigment, just two centimeters of it. And we also use 30 volume. So it is okay to use higher volumes when we are lifting darker tones because it does take that, it, take, it takes a slower process, um, and, but it does it slowly and it does it beautifully. So we were able to reach all the way to, from root to ends, a beautiful tone that just blends with her ends. So that was for Kaylin. Um, one quick other comment I wanted to make for Spirit Lights, for those of you that have curly hair clients that you know that other lighteners tend to get too wet and make the curl come back up and you can't see your application, this consistency stays on the hair when it's curly. So you don't have to blow dry before or um, if you are already applying it and you know your client is curly hair, you don't have to be afraid that it's going to shrink up. The weight of the, of the product makes it stay long and, and, and thin so it, you can actually see the process when it's processing. So it, it, perfect for curly hair because it does not shrink up the hair. Or make yeah, it and it, it, its mixture is so beautiful to just pick up those curls, right? And just like paint it right along it and lay it down and you don't have to worry about transfer or anything like that. Um, which is why we say that this is definitely the ideal product to use when you're trying to get familiar with freehand stuff. So a curly girl would be the perfect candidate for this as well. Yes. Awesome. Of course, this comes in an introduction kit as well. It will come with all four of the pigments. It'll come with the powder, your developers, uh, master palette, a stiff brush, a new bowl, and spatula. It's super cute packaging, right? It looks like a VW bus. It comes in like that, which is awesome. 
The master palette is, um, this is a device that goes on your hand, which is allowing you to do color applications or balayage applications by having this great reservoir here that you can leave your product on. You can wipe off your brush here. You can store your brush here. This little red thing helps you get like those long pieces of hair out of your brush just by twirling. Um, it's just one of those great products that uh, we'll talk about in another class coming up called the Stylist Toolbox. Um, but it, this will also come in that spirit like kit as well. So if you're looking for a fun new tool to try out too, you'll get that free right in that kit. Okay. Excellent. I'm going to touch on yellow anti yellow lightning additives super quick guys what this product is it's a cream based violet pigmented additive that eliminates yellow tones during the lifting process. This can go into all of our lighteners, which is awesome and any other lighteners that are on the market allows the use of a small amount of pigment to be able to provide clean blonde results during lifting through levels six, seven, and eight. This can be used with all ASP lighteners, like I mentioned. You're just gonna simply add one to three centimeters for every 60 grams of unmixed chosen lightener. You're gonna follow proper mix ratios, timing and instructions of your lightener. So this will not change how you um, mix, how long you process anything like that. Anti-yellow is great, again, to use through level six, seven, and eight for the most punch. It's going to be able to refine that tone the most in that way. And again, it can go in all of our lighteners. So even if you're using Spectrum, the violet, or you're using the Spirit Lights violet, and you just want that little extra punch, you can go ahead and put that in right with those products as well. But this really has allowed you to uh, reduce warm tones while lifting. In some situations, you don't even have to tone after. Uh, but it's also really great that um, if you lift up and you need to do a little bit of toning, you don't have to go in with heavy, heavy neutralizing. You're just kind of softly refining this. This has been probably my favorite thing that we've added to our portfolio in the last couple of years. So if you haven't tried it yet, I suggest you do. All right. So I just wanted to show you guys real quick a technique that you can go home with. You've learned about seven different lighteners today, and I want you to also be able to be inspired to go home and try something new behind the chair. So I'm gonna walk you through, this is our standard 10 foil technique with affinage. Um, when I learned this, this is probably one of, been one of those techniques that I keep in my back pocket forever. And I adapt and continue to use every single day behind the chair. This has absolutely replaced my standard partial, for, uh, partial foil format. And it has saved me a ton of time while giving me fantastic results. So this on the left over here is my client, Nikki. <clears throat> she hasn't had her hair done since I think April or May of last year. So it's been a hot minute. Okay, so we're looking to kind of bring that highlight back up and refine the hair a bit. I'm taking a section that's going from the peak of the eyebrow to the peak of the eyebrow. So it's quite larger and more wide than a traditional mohawk section. Um, the length of the section is going to come from her hairline in the front all the way to back to where everyone has that swirl right at the round of the head, okay? So you're just gonna cut that swirl right in half. So it'll be a nice long section and a nice wide one. Okay, and of course you want to adjust this box type section based on where they part their hair. If they have a really severe part all over to the side, that entire box is just gonna shift so that the middle of that, um, that box falls right straddling that part line. Okay. So again, if you, if they really have a quite a severe part, you're going to make sure you do something on the other side of the head to kind of balance those highlights. But in all in all, in Nikki's situation, she flip flops both ways. So I went in right at the center like that. Okay. This is the head sheet for the 10 foil technique. If you want to take a picture of it, if you want to jot it down, however it works for you. But on the left here, you're going to see this is the basic 10 foil technique. So we're essentially creating a box that goes from the outline of that section that we made. So foil number one, two, three, four. And then once we have our box, we're going to actually go center of foil to center of foil and create a triangle here. So you can see that triangle. That's foil five, six seven and eight. We work that all the way around our box. So now our box has actually turned into a diamond. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll straddle the, the, the part line with two foils and one on each side. So you just, I tend to go in and weave these oftentimes so I don't get a hard line on that part line, but you're just going to make sure that you stay off that part, just straddle it so that it just kind of peeks through that part layer and you have a nice veil that lays over it. So you never see any hard part lines. Okay. Off to the right here, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I have the tin foil technique like we did, but of course I'm a stylist and I'm making modifications on a basic technique every single day. So these are the modifications that I've made on Nikki's technique. On Nikki, she wears her hair up a bit. She is a mom, so she likes to make sure that she can get it out of her face. So I did go ahead on her side panels and just weave in two foils on both sides so that when she pulls her hair up, she doesn't just have lightness on the very top, okay? In addition to that, I did go in, her, her hairline does kind of come down in the front, so I did build in these two diagonal pieces for a money piece on her, okay? I particularly like doing this and then just scooting my box back a little bit because it gives me this nice void of lightness right here, which actually when laying down makes these money pieces look a bit brighter. That's what I really love about this entire um, technique is that we're working on straight lines and triangles. So again, I get nice lightness here, but then in this little pocket here, this triangle, I get a nice depth so that that foil lays over it and makes the blondes look actually blonder. Okay. So the 10 foil technique will provide a beautiful even distribution of foils in minimal time. This really is about placement over quantity. People always say, are you still charging the same thing for this technique than if you did a partial foil? Yeah, absolutely. It's providing the same exact finish. So it doesn't matter how I get there. It matters that I'm able to get there. Okay, make this roadmap work for you. You're gonna notice that when you guys do this, it doesn't seem like you're putting a lot of foils in, but because of the way that the hair is falling on the head, working on the rounds of the head, you get a really beautiful spreadability out of something as simple as 10 foils. And this allows you to better utilize your time when and where it counts, okay? So I've just kind of slow sped up and slowed down what I did over here. These are just these two, you know, two foils along her side. I just go in and weave them. That way when she pulls her hair up, she gets a little bit of lightness in through her sides. And then I spin her around and I do the other side again. Really nice fine weaves. I'm working it down. I'm not overlapping through her ends. Her ends are plenty light enough. I don't need to do any of that. Just kind of feathering down. And then I'm working on this box section. So I'm taking foil number one and I'm just outlining the box. Okay, a nice fine weave, work it through, move on to foil number two. This is the right in the 10 foil technique, the box section. So this would be foil two of the box section. Again, I'm really just outlining that whole entire box. Okay, now I'm going to move to the front two panels. So oh, I'm just kidding. I'm going to work on the back. Okay, <laughs> center of foil to center of foil will create that triangle in the middle. Okay, so you're splitting it. Center of foil to center of foil, same thing, splitting it. So I'm really working on making this box section more like a diamond. Now I'm moving to her front section and I'm taking those two diagonal foils in the front to be her money piece. Okay, and another one on that side. So this is part of the modification on that 10 foil technique. Again, I'm gonna do two up there. I want a lot of brightness around her face. And then the second one on that other side of that money piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and continue doing uh, some weaves up the head. Again, that's part of the modifications. Right. And now I'm going to go in and work horizontally across the top of her head. So now you'll see I'm taking that horizontal section, weaving it and working it up. I'm going to about do about two on the interior here, and then I'm gonna to get to her part line. And when I get to her part line, I'm gonna make sure that I'm leaving hair off of her part line so that I can actually fall over it. It's create kind of like a veil type finish so I don't see any hard foil lines. Again, going in horizontal here, just working within my box. So all in all, she'll have 16 foils in her head, that's it, okay? And this will be able to provide the end result for you. You can see that there's a mass amount of coverage here. It looks like I went in and did a more traditional standard military format where I worked foils all the way from her sides, all the way around her head, all the way through the top and spent a lot, a lot of time. This takes me no more than 15 minutes to apply about a, um, a minute of foil, if that. Um, so it's a really great kind of speed service. This again, would be great for any of your lunchtime services. Okay, so I simply use light and 10 volume. You were able to see I was able to get quite a bit of liftability out of that, even with just 10 volume. And then I went and I toned her with 8.2, 30 grams, 9.0, 10 grams, and convert her 80 grams total. 
All right. So that's why when people say you don't, why do you, why don't you charge less for a service like that? It's only, it's not as many foils as a partial. Well, from the outside, it sure looks like a full partial. So don't cheat yourself on stuff like that, guys, just because you found a way to do something quicker doesn't mean it needs to be cheaper. Okay. Looks beautiful, Heather. Good. Um, somebody asked if you could just please go back quickly to the modification sheet. I can. I suggest that we can take screenshots or pictures. Yeah. Uh, if you want to. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead and take a, a photo of that so you have it. But this is my absolute favorite modification. Okay. I build in those two money pieces on the side and then just work a little bit more on the interior here. Remember that it's just as important to leave void space as it is to actually fill up space. The voids are just as important as the, as the highlights. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Quick question. So, they yeah. are asking how long was the toner on for? Um, I really just processed her visually. So she's probably about 10 to 12 minutes and then she was able to be pulled off. Awesome. In all of our classes, we like to shine a user spotlight on somebody that we have who is not an educator, who's using our products outside um, in salons, getting great results. So here we have Nicole Ippolito. She's at Nikki Styles, if you, and then underscore, if you wanted to follow her on Instagram. She's at Studio Trio in Lindenhurst, New York. Uh, this studio actually puts out really, really beautiful work. So if you guys aren't following them, it's, it's a really good chance to. So she went in with a heavy foil with light and 10 volume. Again, amazing to see how clean 10 volume provides out of using light. She used five grams of the toner T32 and 25 grams of T21 along with 60 grams of converter. So just wanted to share with you that we've got people getting really beautiful results out there. These are some of my favorite lightener lusts. I'm not gonna talk about these at all throughout today. This is more of a teaser for you guys to come and join us um, when we have our stylist toolbox course. What we'll do is kind of go through all of my absolute favorites. These just happen to be the favorite tools that I like to use when doing blonding. Uh, the pH for balancer, Vitaplex, which I know we talked about a little bit, Protein additive, color your way. We did mention that as well. That's our color thickener. And of course, anti-yellow deep treatment mask. So these are kind of my lusts that I have when doing lightning. So I encourage you to come back, check out more of our education. And that class will be called the Stylist Toolbox. Okay, if you have more questions about these, I can wait and answer them afterwards. Otherwise, additional upcoming education we have, Kristen Burley is doing an intro to Infinity Color tomorrow. So if this has sparked your interest in the brand and you're a new user, this would be a great time to come and see this course. This is going to give you an intro into our permanent hair color line, what it can offer you, what results you can get, and why it's so special. Then we have Nancy in with us on January 25th. I'll be there too with Nancy. This is a 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern, Artistry Essentials, Cut to Color. Guys, this class has been completely built by Nancy. And if there's anything you want to share as far as what people might see, Nance, go for it. Oh my God, thank you. Um, well, first I want to go back and say about Kristen's class tomorrow. The uh, emails are going out today to give you the Zoom code. So if you haven't yet registered, just you can do that now. Laura will take your information, make sure you get uh, registered for that tomorrow. And for the class on Artistry Essentials, uh, it really is a way of finding what we love to do, the artistry that we know we learn and multiple ways of social media. We know there's so much information out there, but how techniques that could be so artistic we can bring back to behind the chair and work on them uh, from cutting to color placement, how to utilize different formulations that we might have never created, but that can be applied on an everyday client. So I think it's just going to be a really great way to see how we can utilize everything that we might have always wanted to work with that we haven't and be less afraid of it, just be a little bit more um, brave and see that we can do it too. So this is just for all of us to know that anything out there we can do when we know a little bit more uh, and how to do it. So that's for that class. Awesome, I'm super excited for this class guys. So I hope to see you there. Also, we have uh, free education with our ASP Global Ambassadors. If you guys were lucky enough to join us last Monday with Tracy Devine Smith doing her Cut to Color course, you will be elated to know that she's coming back to do the Art of Balayage and Hand Painting with us. Uh, this will be February 1st, 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern. She's fab to work with. She's super fun. She's a powerhouse. And we are so excited that we get to have her here in the U.S. for this great course. 
Okay, again, registrations at laura at asbhair.com. Don't miss your spot. It'll be great. And if you don't already, please make sure that you follow us, ASP Affinage America on Facebook, ASP on uh, ASP Affinage America on Instagram. These are some great hashtags for you guys to use when you're showing your work so that you can be discovered and seen. We also like to support users. So please show us your work so we can share with the world. Below here, you guys will see um, the handles for Instagram on the people that have contributed work to this particular uh, presentation today. So again, go ahead and screenshot that, take a picture of it, whatever you've got to do to get some follows so that you guys can see more of what ASP has to offer. Okay.